On this week's show, Tesla makes a move to buy SolarCity, Hyperloop One signs a deal with Russia, and some really clever students make an electric car accelerate really, really quickly. These stories and more coming up next on 10. Enjoying today's show on YouTube and want to read the stories we're referring to today? Just head to our website at transportevolved.com forward slash TEN, where you'll find today's show notes, as well as links to the latest future car news, buying guides, tech primers, and car reviews. It's Friday, June 24th, 2016. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. And while I know that some of you were more than a little angered about last week's preamble to the show, I want to thank those of you who watched, engaged, and essentially proved that I did the right thing. Thanks. We're starting today's show with a story that has been rumbling around as a rumor for the past few months, but then suddenly became a breaking news story on Tuesday, and it had journalists around the world, me included, scrambling for their keyboards. You see, that's because on Tuesday, California automaker Tesla Motors announced publicly that it wants to acquire Solar City, one of America's leading providers and installers of domestic photovoltaic solar panels. The deal itself will need to be approved by shareholders of both Tesla Motors and Solar City before it can go ahead. But if it does go ahead, it would see Tesla acquire any outstanding shares of Solar City for an estimated $2.8 billion worth of Tesla stock. And at that point, Solar City would become part of Tesla, and customers could buy solar panels alongside Tesla energy products and electric cars at Tesla store. Of course, Elon Musk is president of Solar City and a shareholder of both. While many Harden fans are happy about the news, Wall Street isn't quite so bullish, with Tesla's share price falling more than $15 between the announcement and the time of filming. We've also heard from several Tesla owners and shareholders who are worried that the deal will just spread Tesla a little too thinly ahead of its Model 3 launch. Do you agree? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. This next story doesn't involve massive fluctuations in share prices, but it's still very important for Tesla and any other electric automaker looking to bring an affordable, long-range electric car to market in the coming year or so. That's because this week, Japanese automaker Nissan confirmed during the EVS 29 conference in Montreal, Canada, that its next-generation Leaf hatchback will come with a 60 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery pack as standard, which will give it more than 200 miles of real-world range per charge. And while Nissan has yet to confirm a date for the launch of the said vehicle, hints are now being dropped that suggest we should see Nissan's next-generation plug-in sometime towards the end of this year at a major auto show with a production debut sometime next year. Given that the 60 kilowatt hour long range prototype Nissan has shown us in the past, as well as the IDS concept it debuted in Tokyo last year, we can't wait to see what it has planned as it prepares to take on both the Chevrolet Bolt EV and the Tesla Model 3 in the long range affordable electric car marketplace. We may think of 200 miles as being a long range for an electric vehicle, but how about 4,203 miles? Because that's how far the amazing all-electric Solar Impulse 2 has just travelled non-stop when it arrived in Seville, Spain on Thursday after a mammoth two-day, 23-hour, eight-minute flight from New York across the Atlantic Ocean. The plane itself, with a wingspan as large as a commercial airliner but weighing less than a minivan, used the longest day as its advantage, harvesting 1.368 megawatt hours of electricity on its trip to power it during the day and charge its batteries for nighttime flight. Now it's back in Europe, the Solar Impulse 2 has completed 90% of its round-the-world trip. So here's to pilots Bertrand Picard, who flew the Atlantic leg, Andre Boschberg, and the rest of the Solar Impulse team as they prove categorically that we don't need fossil fuels to travel around the world. Well done all! The team behind Solar Impulse 2 may be all for demonstrating the benefits of electric transportation, but to date, Japanese automaker Toyota has been reluctant to do the same, despite producing two very successful generations of the Toyota RAV4 EV. But this week, Toyota's chief engineer for the Prius Hybrid admitted that Toyota, while heavily focusing on hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, is far more open to the idea of electric cars than it once was, producing electric and hybrid cars for mainstream buyers and reserving expensive hydrogen fuel cell technology for its luxury and high-end models. Teasing electric vehicles in the past for being limited in their range and slow to refuel, it seems that Toyota is now starting to realize just how far ahead of it many other companies are on electric vehicles. And with electricity grids around the world getting cleaner and cleaner, and the cost of producing electricity using renewable methods now actually cheaper than fossil fuels, it seems that Toyota might be regretting its past stance on plug-in cars. 
Of course, there may also be an ulterior motive, namely the cost of producing hydrogen versus electric vehicles. But I'm keen to see what you make of Toyota's unexpected policy changes in the comments below. We're off to Russia next, where we heard this week that Hyperloop One, one of several companies trying to bring Elon Musk's Hyperloop Alpha to commercial reality, has signed an agreement with the city of Moscow to develop Hyperloop routes that could be connected to Moscow's existing transportation system. The partnership, set up between the Russian government, Hyperloop One and the Suma Group, aims to one day set a Hyperloop channel between Moscow and China, making it possible to transfer goods and people to the heart of China from Europe or vice versa in less than a day using the renewable zero emissions technology. At the same time, Hyperloop One and its new partners announced the judges for its Hyperloop Global Channings, a competition designed to identify teams and locations around the world that will help to bring Hyperloop to commercial reality. Not to be confused with the Hyperloop SpaceX competition, this new competition will see the winning designs built as full-scale prototypes in the Nevada desert, next to Hyperloop One's headquarters. We'll keep you posted of more news concerning both parts of this story as and when we have it. We're back to more traditional forms of transportation now with the news that German automaker BMW is about to produce a prototype all-electric version of its i8 sports car with a view to evaluating it as a production vehicle. As UK magazine Autocar reported on Thursday, while the existing BMW i8, which is a range-extended plug-in hybrid sports car, is proving popular with customers around the world, BMW is now looking to replace the complex drivetrain with a larger battery pack and three electric motors capable of improving its straight-line performance and yielding true long-range distance, Tesla range per charge. We understand that this prototype, which will be based on the i8 fuel cell prototype that the automaker produced last year, will have a wide central tunnel into which the long-range battery pack will be fitted, and it will weigh about the same as the production plug-in hybrid model. If successful, BMW sources hint that it could replace the existing i8 in the not-too-distant future, proving that BMW is most certainly in it for the long run when it comes to electric cars. Changing gears, we're off to California now, where governmental fleets are welcoming a number of heavily discounted Toyota Mirai hydrogen fuel cell vehicles to their ranks, courtesy of a special deal worked up between the state and the Japanese automaker. You see, while private customers in the Golden State will find themselves playing a sticker price of $57,000 before incentives, Sacramento County and the city of Long Beach have each managed to get some incredible deals on the limited production vehicle. Long Beach is paying $24,000 to lease its Mirai, including maintenance and free fuel, for three years, while the city of Sacramento is buying each of its four Mirais at a state contracted price of $41,000, more than 28% off list price. We're not quite sure who sucks up the price difference, but when you add in a $15,000 rebate on each car from the California Air Resources Board under its Fleet Pilot Project Scheme, these cars are essentially being sold at less than half their usual value. Now, why can't that kind of discounts go on elsewhere too, eh? An automaker unlikely to offer those kind of outlandish discounts next is Mercedes-Benz, which has confirmed this week that its S-Class plug-in hybrid, the S550e, will gain wireless inductive charging as standard from 2018 onwards. As we've explained before, wireless inductive charging for electric vehicles is still very much in its infancy, so much so that the standards by which wireless inductive charging systems should work have only just been laid out by the Society of Automotive Engineers. But as a high-end, high-ticket car, Mercedes-Benz believes that its customers will pay the extra money for the facility on the S550e, ensuring that as long as they're parked over an inductive charging pad, their car will charge its battery pack for that next trip. Given that we're using an inductive charging system with our Nissan Leaf right now, I've got to say that the experience is certainly convenient, but I'm still to be convinced that the added cost compared to just plugging in the car is really worth it. I'm afraid the jury is still definitely out on this one. Staying with German automakers, we've got another update on the ongoing Volkswagen Dieselgate scandal now, in the form of news that the German government has just approved yet more proposed fixes for non-compliant diesel-engined vehicles. Details at the moment are sparse, but it's believed that Volkswagen now has approval from the German Motor Vehicle Authority for 4.7 million of the 8.5 million affected cars believed to be in Europe. In the US, meanwhile, Volkswagen is still working hard with regulators to find a satisfactory solution, given the country's tougher limits on NOx emissions. 
In related news, however, it's believed to have agreed to pay customers in the US up to $7,000 per car in compensation for the scandal, depending on the age of the vehicle and a few other undisclosed factors. And while the entire process is still very much up in the air, it's believed that the end is in sight for both Volkswagen, the EPA, CARB and the US Justice Department. So watch this space for more information. And finally, we all know that the Tesla Model S P90DL is fast, reaching 60 miles per hour in under three seconds, but it now looks positively glacial thanks to a new electric car record set this week by Grimsel, a single-seat sports car built by a team of students from Switzerland. Those who have watched the show for a year or more will remember that Grimsel featured in a previous episode of this show after setting a 0-62 miles per hour acceleration time of around 1.7 seconds. But this week, with a few tweaks here and there, the same car managed the sprint in 1.513 seconds. That's officially a world record. And this is one car that you're never going to see in production, but quite frankly, when it hits 62 miles per hour in less time than it actually takes to get out of the car, it's fast. I'm sadly nowhere near that fast, nor are either of the two Transport Evolved staff cars sitting downstairs. But I have managed to reach the finish line for this week's show, so don't forget to leave your reactions to the stories we've covered in the comments below, as well as giving us a thumbs up and a share if you liked it. And if you didn't, give us a thumbs down and tell us why, because otherwise we can't improve. I'll be back next week in the usual time with another episode of TEN. And in the meantime, you can find all the news that's fit to print at our website at transportevolve.com. Catch up with us on Twitter at Transport Evolve or check out our latest shows on our usual YouTube channel. And if you liked what you saw today, please consider keeping us independent and impartial by supporting our Patreon crowdfunding campaign from as little as just $1 per month over at patreon.com forward slash transport evolved. We're just a week away from our next monthly deadline, and we'd love to hit a total of $1,200 per month in donations by then. So if you're able to help, please do. As always, there are some stories we didn't manage to fit into today's show, including why Nissan's electric vehicle lineup could soon be expanding to include SUVs and CUVs, Faraday Futures gets permission to test autonomous vehicles in California, BMW demonstrates an energy storage product that uses stock BMW i3 battery packs with no modifications necessary, and Honda's all-electric NSX EV concept prepares to do battle on Pikes Peak this coming weekend. So when we're done, be sure to head to our site and read them all. Thanks for watching, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, have a fantastic weekend, and until next time, keep evolving!